another video presentation from Satin Alliance. My name is Robert Crane and in this video we'll look at Small Business Server 2008 Release Candidate Zero. I'd also like to mention at this point the Satin Alliance SharePoint Operations Guide. This guide provides information on how to install, migrate and maintain Windows SharePoint. For more information go to the following website wssops.satinalliance.com AU. So, what's the same in SBS 2008? There are still two versions, Standard and Premium. SBS includes Windows Server, Exchange Server and SharePoint. And it still supports up to 75 users. So what's the differences with SBS 2008 now? Firstly, it only supports a single network card. This means on the standard edition, you'll need to implement an independent hardware firewall. Secondly, SBS 2008 does no longer support tape backup. All backups are normally performed to hard disk media. And finally, SBS 2008 is a 64-bit server hardware platform. This may mean that migration from older versions requires a lot more work. So let's get into it and have a look at what Small Business Server 2008 now looks like. So here we are in the new Small Business Server console. As you can see, the look and feel is very different from the previous version. It's very much in line with Server 2008 and Windows Vista. You'll see a number of tabs across the top. And if we go to our home tab, you'll see that it's still very much a wizard based system. We've got a connection to the internet wizard, we've got a internet address wizard setting up our emails so if we wanted to set up our internet address we simply click on that link and that will launch the wizard which we then follow through step by step till completion. So if we wanted to we could then go to the next and pull out the information the wizard would finish. So I'll just cancel this. Over on the right hand side we've got some essential indicators here about the health of our network. So at the moment the security is rated as critical, our updates are okay, backup hasn't been configured so it's just a warning and we have a number of other alerts. If we now look at the users and groups we can now see that like previous versions we have a list of our would have a list of our users appearing here and we have a number of tasks which obviously initiate a number of wizards. So we can add a new user account, we can add multiple accounts, and so on. We can also look at a number of tabs which are available. Um, we've got different user roles, so these are similar to the templates in the old version, and we've got our groups. We now click on the network tab. You'll see that it lists our server. Currently there are no computers, client computers connected to this server and we can enable a number of different features over here on the right under tasks. On the tabs we've got devices so there's no fax device connected or any printers at the moment and we've also got a connectivity tab so again this gives us information on like our connection to the internet, our domain name, our web server certificate, um, firewall, intrusion detection, those sort of things. We go to our shared folders and websites Again, if we click on this, we see the current um, shared folders on the server. These are currently the default settings. So we have public, redirected folders, and user shares. If we click on the Websites tab, we'll see that we've got a remote web workplace, as we did in the previous version. We've got an Outlook Web Access to allow us to access our emails, as we did previously, and an Internet website, which is company web, which is operating on SharePoint. Again, we've got a number of different options over here on the right. And one of the options you'll notice here is to set up your Microsoft Office Live Small Business website. Microsoft has implemented a number of in the cloud computing options with this version of SPS. If we click now on the backup and storage tab, we'll see that we can select our backup. Um, we can configure our server. 
um, when to do backups, much like the wizard before, but obviously, as mentioned previously, there is no longer support for tape devices. It all has to be external hard disk storage. If we click on the server storage tab, we can see our disk size, the usage, and its status. And again, more options over here on the right. Now, as you notice, we've got wizards now that allow us to move our Exchange server data, our SharePoint services data. So again, previously in SBS, a lot of these tasks had to be performed manually. These have now all been implemented via a wizard. If we now look at the Reports tab, you'll see that we get a options for our Network Summary Report and also our Detailed Report. Again, we can view the report properties simply by clicking on the option and making any changes that are required. So we've got what it's called, for example, the content, whether we want to include the summary, the security, the update. So again, we probably in a lot of cases want to have all these ticked. Um, we check our email options, who's going to receive the emails, when they're sent from reports. Again, we can tick a number of internal users, but we can also nominate some external users. I can nominate how often these reports are sent and also when they are sent. And again, I've got an option here that I can look at previously archived reports to give me a comparison against the current baseline. And finally, we have a security tab. The security tab here talks about, for example, our licenses, any errors that we have during our update services, optional updates, things like that. If you look at the security tab, You'll find that it tells us things like our virus protection, our client computer firewalls, spam, and so on. So underneath the bonnet of um, SBS, you'll see that it's basically standard Windows Server 2008. So installed on this, this is the standard edition of Small Business Server 2008, we have the familiar Exchange and SQL Server, which manages our SharePoint data. So the addition included with SBS 2008 is Exchange Server 2007. So again, we can go into administrative tools. Um, it's all still very similar to um, a standard Windows 2008 server. So again, if we return to the SBS console, we'll see that it provides a very good overview. And the experience so far has generally been that it is a much easier setup than with previous versions. And one of the other nice touches now that you'll notice is down the bottom here under the taskpad, you've got frequent tasks and community links. So if we view that, we can now see that you know, typically what you're going to want to be doing is adding a user, adding a group. So again, here's a nice shortcut method to get to the information that you're probably most frequently going to be working with. We've also got a number of links to the Small Business Server community uh, within Microsoft and externally. And then finally down the bottom here, we've got to get getting started. Oh, sorry, we've got to return to our getting started tasks. So that's been a brief overview of the upcoming version of Small Business Server 2008. To help us continue to make material like this available, if you find this video beneficial, we would ask you to make a donation towards helping us improve what we currently provide. All donations, no matter how small, will ensure the continuation and improvement of our offerings. To make a donation, go to donation.satinalliance.com.au. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for watching this video and please remember to send me any feedback via email at robert at satinalliance.com.au and keep up to date with what's happening on Small Business Server 2008 via my blog at supportweb.ciaops.net.au forward slash blog. Thank you very much for watching.